Okay, let's get started. Um, thank you so much for joining uh, this webinar this morning. Um, I'm going to be talking on the three things to do before starting a website project. Um, so just a few things as we begin. Um, so after this, you'll receive a copy of the recording. Uh, so please feel free to take notes as you go along, but I'll also make sure that you get a copy of the slide deck and the recording. Um, there'll be a chance at the end for some questions, so feel free to put those in the chat as I talk through this topic, and I'm really happy to, to answer those at the end. Um, I'll be covering this topic broadly, right? So I appreciate that there's uh, many businesses and, and organizations represented here of all different shapes and sizes. So I hope that the majority of this is relevant to you, um, but I just want to put that caveat out there from the start. Um, and would, finally, I would love your feedback on social. So get involved in the conversation at Webbox Digital using the hashtag Webbox. So a little bit about my, me. Uh, so my name is Will. I founded a digital agency called Webbox back in 2008. So I've been working with brands uh, for over 13 years and getting involved in some really exciting projects for the likes of uh, Fevertree, the NHS, Airbus, DS Smith, and St. John Ambulance, to name a few. And uh, what I do day to day, I guess, is I, I work alongside those um, companies and brands to help them define their requirements for website projects and paid ad campaigns. Um, genuinely love doing what I do, hence why I talk on these kind of topics to help businesses like you um, kind of start on the right foot, as you would say. So what's the plan for today? Uh, the plan is to look at these three things. I want us to look in, look around and look out, okay? So they're the three things that you can take away from today and remember, okay? So looking in, this is all about kind of your internal uh, requirement gathering and getting people to approve um, your brief, etc. Looking around is all about kind of looking at your stakeholders, your users, and putting together a list of their requirements. And looking out is then what do you do with that brief and how do you um, send it to the most relevant agencies? So as we start on this topic, you might ask me, Will, you know, what, what's the reason for talking about this topic? Uh, why this? Uh, and actually, I think these stats say it all. So, you know, 70 percent of organizations have suffered um, at least one project failure in the last 12 months. And 50 percent of those indicated that their project has actually failed to consistently achieve what they set out to achieve. I think so often uh, as businesses and organizations, we um, define these projects to work on and we start on the best foot possible. But sometimes, uh, and hopefully the minority of times, things don't go quite um, as we'd hoped. And therefore, I want to talk on this topic because I feel like I've got some tips to share with you today um, to help projects stay on the right track um, from start to finish. So without further ado, let's start with looking in uh, this is all about the, in, the requirements and internal agreement so as you um start a, a website project it's really important to uh, look within your organization so start speaking with the departments within the, the business find out um how they currently interact with your website uh, what do they use it for how does the website impact their role day to day and try and um, gather those requirements, maybe from uh, small meetings, one-to-ones, uh, with maybe heads of departments or people uh, who would be deemed as an internal stakeholder. And try and um, get to the nitty gritty as to, um, you know, how the website impacts them and what are their kind of must-haves for a new website um, and what are the nice-to-haves, okay? Um, and I think they're really good conversations to have internally. It's also uh, worth, thinking about your internal capacity. So um, what I mean here is if you're going to work with an agency, have you got capacity internally to, to manage the agency, to have some sort of project manager uh, working on your side of the fence, okay? Um, that's quite important to kind of make things go, uh, go smoothly. Um, but if, if not a dedicated project manager, maybe just someone who says, I'm gonna take the lead uh, from the business's point of view, in terms of working alongside the agency to deliver this project. But on the complete flip side, you might look at your internal skill set and actually say, do you know what, we've got a team internally who could deliver this project. 
you know, we've got uh, designers, developers, uh, digital marketers, and, and so on. And, and if that's the case, again, that's great to identify so you know who could deliver this website project. And the third thing here is internally starting to think about your uh, time scales and budgets for this project. Now, this is sometimes really difficult for uh, businesses to uh, agree on and define, um, and there might be differing views internally. But I think it's really important that you're transparent with uh, the agency from day one, so that if you are looking for the project to be delivered by a particular date, and that's maybe a non-negotiable, then they know that from day one. Or alternatively, um, maybe you haven't got a time scale or budget and, and you, you really have no idea you're looking for the agency to propose a time scale and budget. And again, that's fine. Just make that clear uh, to the agency from day one. Um, but it's good to have those conversations internally um, before you, you take the next steps. Now, the other thing you want to be doing when you're looking in is start to um, quantify, if possible, the kind of consequences of not undertaking this project. So what I mean here is you might have a really old website, which is difficult, timely, and costly to maintain, or you might have a website which doesn't automate uh, various processes or integrate with your CRM. Therefore, someone internally has to manually take data from the website or an email and copy it into uh, CRM. And all these things cost your business time and money. So you, if you can quantify that, that would be fantastic. Um, or even if you can quantify things like loss of sales, you know, if you're running an e-commerce business and actually your website just is not performing, or maybe it has a low conversion rate, then these are things which we can help people a number on. And there's a reason for that. The reason is so that you can talk to budget holders internally, um, you know, managers, your senior leadership team, whatever it might be for your organization. And you can talk to them about the consequences of not undertaking this project and the cost of the business um, until the website is replaced. Hopefully those conversations will lead to your budget holders and senior leadership team agreeing that the website project needs to be undertaken and actually standing behind uh, the intent to go out to agencies and uh, and look for a new website so that's everything i want to talk on in, in relation to looking in um i want to move on now to looking around okay so i find um you know over the years that so so often uh, we're very good at working within our businesses we keep our head down we work through the day to day and actually, sometimes it's really healthy to step back and look around, okay? Um, so I want to kind of encourage you to lift your heads up from the day to day and actually consider what others need from the new website. Now, this could be uh, internal stakeholders. So it could be that you work within one department in the business, but you rarely speak to other departments. So it'd be really good for you to get to know other departments and start to, um, you know, start those conversations with them about what they're looking for. But it could also be external stakeholders. So this could be your, um, your customers, your end users. Uh, it could be trustees. It could be people who are on a board, um, you know, whatever it might be. People who might be external to your um, business or organization are really worthwhile uh, involving in, in this process and involving them early on, okay? Because then people buy into the whole process. Um, so if you can do that, that's going to be a big tick in the box. And I think it's going to help you um, with the, the website project. Now, once you've done that, hopefully you're going to have plenty of information from talking to people internally and externally. And it's now time to put pen to paper, as I call it. So what you want to decide on at this point is, are you going to write uh, a general agency brief or are you going to write a technical brief or, or a scope of work? Let me just explain the, the difference, okay? Um, so for those that um, know that they need a new website, they, they understand that uh, the time has come for that and they've got a broad list of requirements, uh, maybe some information generally about timescales and you know who the point of contact is going to be, then you might want to put a general agency brief together, um, almost like an RFP, a request for proposal. Uh, and that document's going to outline bits of information such as, you know, about your business, you know, what you're looking for, um, you know, when it needs to be delivered by, things like that. Um, alternatively, some businesses um, 
are, 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 you know, through internal resource are able to go into far more technical information. And that could be around things like uh, integrations, you know, the website uh, has to have uh, and how the website needs to technically function. And if you're able to do that, that's great. Put together a technical spec um, whereby you can get into that nitty gritty detail. Um, but also I would say if you're not able to, it's absolutely fine. Most agencies are really happy to work alongside clients to uh, help them write and define the scope of work. Um, so once you've done that, um, I, I would just say, um, make sure that it's been put together by the team that are gonna be working on the project. Uh, a little aside, you know, I, I vividly remember probably about six years ago now, um, we won a tender uh, in a public sector organization and it was all very exciting. We got to that kickoff meeting and we started going through all of their tender documentation and the, the scope of work and everything that they needed. And before we got there, the project team said, well, hang on, uh, actually this has all been written by the procurement department and, and they didn't really understand what we were looking for. So let's put that aside and let's write a new set of requirements. Though we're happy to be flexible, obviously you can imagine that that was quite a difficult process because everything leading up to that had been based on the requirements that we had had. So it's really important that the people writing the brief and uh, that are involved in putting that together are those that are actually going to be involved in the project. So that might be a project manager or project sponsor uh, from your side. All right. So that's my, my little kind of horror story um, uh, about that. I just want to give in this section as well, just a few top tips. If you're looking to, to write a brief and maybe you're not quite sure where to start, then there's a few things that I would just like to point out uh, that are really helpful to include within your brief. OK, so the first thing is just give us an introduction to the business. Right. So you'll know it because you work there um, as an agency. We won't. OK, so talk to us about, uh, you know, what you do, uh, what makes you unique. Um, you know, kind of what are your values, what's the size and structure of the business to give us a flavor as to uh, what it is that you do. And then talk to us about your target audience uh, and your current website, what you like, what you don't like, etc. cetera. Um, then from a project perspective, talk to us about what the objectives are, okay? So you might want to be uh, focusing on making the website more mobile compatible, or reducing bounce rates, increasing conversion rates, etc. These are things which are really good to define early on so that the agency can suggest ideas to achieve those objectives. Um, and then talk about the features. You know, what does the website need to do? Uh, does it need a blog? Does it need a shopping cart? You know, all these kind of things are useful to know um, early on in the process. From a content perspective, it's good to know uh, if you have a list of, of content and pages ready, then that's great to, uh, to kind of mull over and, and to talk to you about. But again, if not, uh, most agencies are really happy to help you define that uh, and to define a sitemap structured uh, and focused on user experience um, throughout this process. And then finally, you know, time scale is important, you know, budget's important if you can include that. And then finally, the deliverables. So what do you want the agency to come back to you with? Um, so is that uh, an RFP document? Um, is that a tender uh, within a particular format? Is there you know, word count in some instances? Um, you know, do you want some case studies, testimonials, references? Um, you know, this is your opportunity to say to the agency, this is what we want in order to review um, your proposal. OK, so just a few top tips there on, um, you know, what you should include in your brief in order to, uh, to sort of supply that to an agency. Now, if we move on to looking out, this is one of the most important and instrumental parts of this whole process. So up to now, you've uh, hopefully defined what you're looking for. You've um, I guess, made the decision that you're going to contact an agency rather than do the project in-house. You've got um, sign off and, and kind of permission internally that the project is going to go ahead. It's going to be given a budget and, and it's going to be given resource internally to deliver this. And you're now at the point where you've got a, a list of requirements and you're ready to go out to the market. So at this point, what do we recommend you do? So 
initially we say consider what you're actually looking for okay i think sometimes people just go straight out to market and just go right let's get the brief out to a number of agencies without uh, considering this important uh, sorry important step so what do i mean by this what i mean is you need to um, i guess have an understanding that with 25000 agencies in the uk lots of them have uh, specialist skill sets and offerings um, and therefore it's not a case of just sending the brief to any agency so you should consider whether you're looking for an agency that uh, specializes in a skill set so for example an agency that only does web development that that is what they do day in day out or on the flip side are you looking for a full service agency that might be able to help you with uh, your marketing and your graphic design and your video production and all these other wonderful things. Um, so it's worth you know considering what you're looking for there. Alternatively, are you looking for an agency that's sector specific? So an agency that's worked in your sector and, and maybe your sector only, um, could that add value to the project? Um, it sometimes can, it, it sometimes doesn't, right? Um, but that's worth you considering. Um, are you looking for a local agency? Um, there's nothing more disheartening when you lose a pitch and, and you lose it because of your location. It's really important to define that from day one, um, if that's important to you, so that you can actually meet with the agency face to face. Um, obviously, with the pandemic, uh, most things are over video now, um, but I appreciate some people still want that local feel, which is absolutely understandable. Um, and then you might be looking for an agency of a particular size. Um, and, and that's also fine. You know, you might say, actually, we've got quite a large project and we're looking for a team that can deliver upon this and have a track record of doing this. Um, now, once you consider those things, I think when you go out to market, you'll have a much clearer idea as to uh, which agencies to send a brief to and which might not be a good fit. Secondly, in this section is actually how do you go out and find a suitable agency? You know, if you haven't worked with one before, um, or maybe you know you're looking to move agency. Where on earth do you start? Um, so my advice is um, avoid a general search. Okay, I would never just open up a search engine, type in you know web designers, and choose the first five. That's never going to end well. Um, I think I would always suggest that you ask for recommendations from maybe people that you know in other businesses uh, that have had really good experiences of their agency. Um, or you might want to actually chat to agencies at an event. So you might go to uh, a marketing event or a business event, and there might be some uh, agencies there speaking or exhibiting. And actually, it's quite a good opportunity to speak to an agency and just get a feel for um, what they're like as people and as a team. Um, so that's a really good way to do it. Or alternatively, maybe engage with some agencies on social. Watch what they talk about. Um, you know, watch the kind of content they put out and just see if you align with that. And then uh, the, the final point here is in terms of choosing the right agency, I'm a big believer in choosing an agency that actually aligns with your vision and your values. This is something which not many people talk about, right? Because sometimes the decision is just made upon other things like um, you know, location or skill set or um, budgets, time scale, et cetera. But actually, you need to work with the agency and hopefully for the long term, you need to build a partnership with these people. And after all, um, you know, businesses do business with, uh, sorry, businesses do uh, business with other businesses, but ultimately people have to work with people. So just have a look to see if the agency um, understands you, you know, where you're coming from. Have a look at the kind of agency's culture and their values and just see if that aligns with you. You know, ask questions like, you know, who would my project manager be? Who would I be working with day to day? Um, and get to know those people, because actually that's going to be a really important part of this journey. So hopefully those three parts, those three things today are, are going to help you on your way when it comes to uh, looking in, looking around and looking out when it comes to a website project. Now, you'll see from the webinar title that there's also a freebie, and I want to make sure that no one leaves empty handed today. So it's a little bit uh, gimmicky, uh, apologies for that. But what I've done is I've written uh, a template for helping you write uh, a website brief. 
And it's literally uh, a PDF document where I go through all the elements that should be within a, a website brief. And it allows you to, to populate that. Uh, I'd love to share that with you afterwards. Just um, I, I hopefully it will help you as you go through this process. The other thing I want to kind of offer is um, a free website audit, um, sorry, website brief audit. So if you've got uh, a website brief and you're just about to send it out to agencies, I'm very happy for you to send that to me. And, uh, you know, with you know, my experience, I would, I would look over that and have a look to see if there's feedback or suggestions that I can uh, provide. Happy to do that anytime. So there's my email address. Please feel free to um, send over any questions that you've got. Um, or any website briefs. And I'm happy to look at that completely impartially just to see if you've got the right things within that document before it goes out to agencies. So that's everything from me today. I just want to thank you for, for listening. And um, I'm happy to move to some questions. So um, if there are any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, and I will just open up my chat window now to see if I've got any. Let's have a look. Okay, great. So I've got one sent to me directly here, um, and I'll just read it out for everyone. So first one is, does the client have to write a brief, or could this be done in conjunction with the agency? So that's a great question. Um, absolutely, um, you know, the client doesn't have to write the brief, okay? Um, most agencies will actually welcome the opportunity to do that alongside you. Um, it, it gives them a bit more creativity and a bit more freedom, and it gives them a, an opportunity to suggest ideas that you might not have thought of yourself. So absolutely uh, don't kind of put that burden on yourself if you're not quite sure where to start. Um, I'm sure the agency will be happy to, to help you. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, I've got one over here. Um, okay, so here's another question. Can I gain more budget? from the budget holder or how can I use I think she said how can I gain more budget from the budget holder uh okay <laughs> very good question so you, you might have a budget for a, a website project and it might not be enough to uh, to cover everything that you're looking for um this is quite difficult because I, I think sometimes if there's a disjoint between a budget holder and and what you're trying to do maybe within the marketing department um, then it's very difficult to go back to that budget holder and ask for more budget. Hence, why I'm a big believer in leadership teams and budget holders being involved in this process from day one, because if they can see the value of it and they buy into the fact that we need to replace the website, then they're far more likely to release the budget um, that's necessary. Now, um, the best way to do this, in my opinion, would be through stats. So if you can actually say, look, at the moment, we spend X number of hours each week manually transferring data from emails to our CRM. Um, this is time which could be um, used elsewhere because we could integrate our website with a CRM. Those kind of statistics will certainly help you um, pull the lever, if I can use the expression, and, um, and hopefully gain more budget. Okay, great. Um, Another question I've got here, uh, what time scales would you suggest are realistic for launching a new basic website? Um, this is obviously really subjective to what you're looking for, and it also comes down to the approach. So I know here at Webbox, it's very much like a bespoke approach where we're gonna be designing everything from the ground up, whereas other agencies might use a template and therefore it could be a little bit quicker. Um, but obviously there's pros and cons to each, each approach. Um, for us, I would probably say, uh, you know, two months, maybe three months would be a realistic time scale um, for, as you call it, a, a, a basic website. Um, but definitely uh, one to kind of talk to your agency about and, and to ask their opinion uh, as well. Um, another question here I've got is, um, do you think being local to your agency is important? Are face-to-face -face meetings necessary early on? Um, Personally, from my experience over the last 13 years, I would say locality should have nothing to do with it. Um, I, I understand the value in in face to face conversations and meetings. And actually, I, I prefer them if I'm brutally honest. But there's nothing stopping you from meeting face to face, maybe uh, once or twice at the start of a project just to, you know, just to get things going. So you might have like a project kickoff meeting as part of the 
the, the kind of uh, the life cycle uh, and maybe that could be done face to face and maybe the agency would travel to you to do that but i think really after that you know we're, we're finding here at webbox that everything really can be done over video conference email you know slack uh, phone etc um so for me being local uh, is not uh, is not important and, and really shouldn't be a decision um, maker and I think the last question I've got here is, um, is a phased approach to introducing a new website a good idea in your experience? Um, good question. Um, I, I, I'm a big believer in breaking down projects into phases. So if, if that's what you're referring to. So sometimes you might have quite an extensive list of requirements. Uh, or potentially on the flip side, maybe the budget doesn't allow us to deliver all of those requirements in one hit. So I am a big believer in delivering the project in phases and having a clear roadmap to what is included in each of those phases and when they're likely to be delivered. Um, but I think that needs to be on the agenda and in the planning early on. Um, so I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend um, delivering the website and then um over many years it gets pulled and tugged into lots of different directions because lots of new things come uh to the forefront at that point because sometimes then the end result can be uh be rather messy um so i think if you can plan those things early on and say right this is where we're heading this is the big picture uh you know blue sky thinking then i'm a big believer in that and we say right this is what phase one will look like and we could maybe call that an mvp and then obviously from there on in, we could um, work through the phases of, of work. Um, oh, one other question. So yeah, thanks Maria. So we've got, uh, what's the best way to create a website in six different languages? Um, okay, so multilingual websites are um, obviously quite common nowadays. Um, there's a number of ways to implement that. So for example, uh, you know, your, your kind of starting point would be to kind of maybe integrate with something like Google Translate to do automatic translations. Alternatively, you could um, have <clears throat> real kind of translations put into your CMS. So whether you use, you know, the likes of WordPress or something off the shelf, or whether you use a custom CMS, it doesn't matter. Um, all of those kind of allow you to enter multiple languages into the CMS. So you would literally have an English version of the page, um, you know, a Spanish version of the page and so on. Um, and then you can put rules in place. So you can say, if one of my pages only has uh, five of the languages populated and not that sixth because we're awaiting copy, um, then actually if the page is blank, default to a particular language. Uh, so there's lots of ways that you can do that. And uh, yeah, I'd be happy to discuss with you the best way forward um, after this. Okay, great. I think that's all of the questions I've, I've been sent. So thank you ever so much for getting involved. I really appreciate it being uh, two ways. Um, like I said uh, at the start, uh, you know, thank you for taking the time out of your day to go through this content with me. I really appreciate that. And afterwards, I will send a copy of the slides and the recording. Um, and if you've got any questions, please feel free to, to contact us. We'd be more than happy to help. Uh, but for now, thank you and hope you enjoy your afternoon.